Clara, with her trusty walking cane in hand, meanders through the local park, her path a familiar trail leading towards the supermarket. Her routine is as constant as the changing seasons around her. One crisp afternoon, a sudden rustle interrupts her tranquil solitude. A group of teenagers, often seen loitering in the park, starts to converge around her. Clara's heart raises the unexpected encirclement feels ominous, casting a shadow over her peaceful stroll. She tried to continue her journey and walk past the group of teens, but they wouldn't let her pass her pass. One by one, they blocked her way, and suddenly, one of them called out, yes, this is her Clara froze, unsure of what to do next. When one of the boys stood in front of her and slowly reached into his pocket, Clara felt like something horrible was about to happen. What would he take out of his pocket? A knife or maybe a gun? However, a moment later, the boy put something in her hands, and she was surprised when she saw what it was. What did the boys want from Clara? What did they hand her? And why did she end up in tears? But before we start, smash the like button, and make sure to subscribe if you haven't, and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss any new stories. Clara smiled as she walked through the park and looked around. The autumn sun was shining, and it was a beautiful day. It wasn't far to the supermarket now. Clara noticed a group of teenage boys were gathered a little down the road, but she did not think much of it. Clara walked towards the teenage boys, her gaze fixed on a point just beyond them, trying to convey disinterest. With each step, she felt a mix of weariness and curiosity. Why were they there? This wasn't the usual indifference she encountered their attention was pointed, and it felt like they were waiting for something. Clara's heart skipped a beat unsure of what to do. Their stares were unabashed, curious, and strangely expectant. Suddenly, the boys spread out, smoothly encircling Clara, cutting off her intended route. She stopped, unsure of what was going on. What could these boys possibly want with her? Why wouldn't they let her pass? Clara's eyes darted from one face to another, seeking an explanation in them. Relief washed over her, though it was quickly overshadowed by bewilderment. Why did these boys have her flyer? Clara examined the paper, her confusion deepening as she realized it was indeed the flyer she had made for her missing cat. Bubbles, the familiar photo of Bubbles, alongside her contact information, stared back at her. But how and why did these boys have it? Why do you have this? Clara asked, her voice quivering slightly. The boy, who had handed her the flyer, simply said, We found it with a hint of a smile. Clara's fear began to melt away, replaced by a spark of hope. What had started as an intimidating circle now felt more like a gathering of alleys. Now, Clara was eager to hear more. Where is Bubbles? Do you know where she is? She asked, her voice filled with hope and anticipation. The last time we saw him, he was in the park over there. One of the boys pointed in the direction of a nearby park. They suggested she wait here while they checked again. Despite their offer to go without her, Clara shook her head emphatically. No, I have to come with you. I can't just wait here. Not when Bubbles might be so close her voice was firm, leaving no room for argument. The boys exchanged glances, then nodded in agreement. They started walking towards the park, the boys leading the way, Clara following close behind, as she couldn't wait to see Bubbles again. Mitkin upon reaching the unfamiliar park, Clara followed the boys as they led her through the winding paths to a specific tree. She had never been to this part of the neighborhood before and was surprised by its serene beauty. And there one boy exclaimed, pointing upwards. Clara's gaze followed to the high branches of the tree where Bubbles was perched, looking as majestic and indifferent as only a cat could. Clara's heart leaped at the sight of him. The action he had been missing for days, and seeing him now felt surreal. The boys explained they had spotted him there over the last several days, unsure of how to rescue him. Clara couldn't believe that he had gone here, a park that she had never visited before with him and didn't even know the existence of. Gratitude washed over her as she realized the lengths these boys had gone to find her and help her reunite with Bubbles. Clara stepped up, calling out to Bubbles with a voice that shook a bit. Hey, Bubs, it's me the way Bubbles mouthed back was like he was saying. Finally, you found me, Clara had to blink away happy tears. She pondered over how he found himself in such a predicament and, more importantly, how they would manage to bring him down safely. It was she was desperate to get him down to make sure he was okay. Every minute that passed with Bubbles up in that tree felt like an hour, her mind racing with what ifs and how to use. What relief of finding him bittersweet with the anxiety for his safety. The fear of causing Bubbles more harm than good loomed large, making the decision process even more fraught. Clara, feeling the weight of the situation, suggested calling the fire department. It seemed like the safest option to have professionals handle the rescue. Just as Clara was about to make the call, one of the boys stepped forward with a determined look. I can climb up and try to get him, he said confidently. Clara couldn't help but feel concerned for the boy she didn't want him to get hurt for trying to get her cat. Clara hesitated, unsure of what to do. Kitty, after a moment of anxious deliberation, Clara gave her reluctant consent to the boy's plan. 
Watching him approach the tree, her heart was in her throat. She admired his courage, yet couldn't shake off the dread of him getting hurt. Clara watched her heart pounding as he skillfully navigated the branches, inching closer to the stranded cat. As the boy climbed closer, Bubbles' loud meows filled the air, a clear sign of his distress. My sound tugged at Clara's heartstrings, reinforcing the urgency of the rescue. Despite his precarious situation, Bubbles seemed aware of the attempt to save him, his cries becoming more frequent as the boy drew nearer. Clara hoped Bubbles wouldn't do anything rash. A small crowd had started to form around the tree, drawn by the drama of the rescue attempt. Onlookers watched with bated breath, ready to offer assistance or call for help if needed. The silence was heavy, filled with the collective anticipation of those gathered. Clara, tucked behind the supportive group of teenagers, could barely contain her racing heart, dreading any misstep that could endanger both Bubbles and his brave boy's safety. This, the safety of Bubbles and the boy was all that mattered, and the wait for any sign of their well-being seemed endless. Suddenly, a scream pierced the tense silence, jolting Clara from her thoughts. Her eyes flew open, her heart thudding with dread. Had something gone wrong? The fear of a fall, of injury, of the worst-case scenario she'd been trying to push from her mind flooded her with a cold rush. Clara's gaze darted from the tree to the ground, and a moment of panic set in when she realized Bubbles was no longer on his branch. Had he fallen? Was he hurt? The tree seemed too silent, and the absence of Bubbles' distressed meows suddenly became loud and it's quiet. The crowd seemed to hold their breath like Clara. Where was the boy? And where was Bubbles? Before Clara's panic could spiral further, one of the boys stepped forward, Bubbles cradled safely in his arms. The relief that washed over Clara was indescribable. She reached out, her hands trembling as she took her beloved pet into her arms, feeling his familiar weight and warmth. His bubbles was safe, unharmed, and finally back where he belonged. Nate, however, that relief was short-lived when she found out how Bubbles actually came down. It turned out that Bubbles hadn't been rescued in the traditional sense. After being taken in the climbing boy's arms, Bubbles had become spooked. Instead of staying put, he had taken a leap of faith. Thankfully, another quick-thinking boy was right there to catch him, ensuring a soft landing. His detail added an extra layer of gratitude towards the boys from Clara. It, their readiness and bravery had saved her furry friend from what could have been a disastrous fall. Clara turned to the boys, her eyes brimming with tears of gratitude. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, she said, her voice thick with emotion. She made it clear that her door was always open to him, an invitation to drop by any time they wished. In the weeks that followed, the boys took up Clara's offer, visiting her for tea and chats. These weren't just courtesy calls, they were the beginnings of a genuine friendship. Their conversations ranged from the mundane to the profound, creating a bridge between generations. Clara enjoyed their company immensely, finding their perspectives refreshing and their company a source of joy. Together, Clara, Bubbles, and her new young friend shared a bond that went beyond the ordinary. My, it was a connection forged from kindness, bravery, and a shared moment of crisis.